Hey, good morning. This is David Cameron. If we can help you with any hands-on HVAC training, uh, please give us a call or check us out on the website. Uh, that is HVACRSkills.com. Uh, I've got a live equipment lab in Garner, North Carolina, and also have a truck and trailer that we can load up and bring hands-on training to your team wherever you may be, HVACRSkills.com. Appreciate you joining me to talk for just a few minutes about demand defrost controls while I am procrastinating the cleaning of the lab and finishing a cup of coffee we're going to spend about 10 minutes together on this control just discussing the function the inputs and outputs and a couple of testing tips first of all we'll start with the low voltage inputs and that is on the bottom left side of the board. We have got 24-volt uh, input terminals, R and C. This is my hot and common, so to speak, of my 24-volt signal that is constantly supplied to this board anytime your service disconnects um, are on and, and your transformer is functioning and, of course, uh, your low-voltage fuse is intact. We are going to constantly energize this board with 24 volts, on R and C. This is going to give us some sort of activity on the LED and just as a tip for any zone control board, integrated furnace control, demand defrost controls, if it has some sort of display or some sort of LED and you find no activity or the LED is totally off, then verify 24 volts to your board on the constant power terminals for it. Again, on this one, that is going to be R and C, 24 volts at all times, coming to this board. I'm going to skip over here to the Y terminal and where um, typical um, industry designation for Y is going to be compressor. And that is going to be my input from my thermostat, calling for the compressor contactor to close and that's going to bring on my compressor and my outdoor fan motor in most applications. So Y is my compressor input. B is my reversing valve input. B is electrically opposite of O, whereas O is an auxiliary output terminal in the cool mode, B is an auxiliary output terminal in the heating mode. And usually these terminals are used for reversing valves in air-to-air -air heat pumps. So where you have a reversing valve energized in cooling, that will typically use the O terminal. Where you have reversing valves energized in heat, that will most often use the B terminal. So on this control, it is set up for reversing valves energized in the heating mode. My B terminal is my 24-volt input from the thermostat whenever I call for heating operation. D is an output to the auxiliary heaters for defrost. There are three functions that will happen whenever an air-to-air -air heat pump initiates a defrost mode. One will be the reversing valve shifts and this essentially puts the unit back in the cooling mode so your outdoor coil begins to heat up. The second thing that happens is the outdoor fan cuts off. This concentrates the heat energy around that outdoor coil to melt that frost off as quickly as possible. And being that the unit now is effectively in cooling mode, we have got to energize the auxiliary heaters to temper that air and try to avoid you know, freezing out the customer during that defrost cycle. So reversing valve shifts, Outdoor fan motor cuts off, auxiliary heaters cut on. Different defrost control plans may involve a uh, timer only, and then the timer is energizing one or more defrost relays that make these three things happen. Um, this particular control handles everything on board. So when we are energizing our heat strips for defrost, that is an output on my D terminal. Now, we have got a reversing valve coil that'll be connected back to this board. Remember this board is the go-between 
from the thermostat signals to the load function. So when I energize B to energize my reversing valve from the stat, I get an output on RV for reversing valve here to that 24 volt reversing valve coil. And you've got an onboard relay that actually breaks that signal. So we have a normally closed contact between these points that will open during defrost, shifting that valve back to its cool position. We have onboard uh, pressure switch protection um, for the compressor. So LPC is my low pressure control. HPC is my high pressure control. And just as a side note, notice the low pressure control um, actually are these smaller uh, 3 16th inch uh, female or male disconnect terminals and so so I'm going to need to have a 3 16th inch you may find the labels on those packages say 0.18 so we've got two different types of stake on or or push on terminals in our business that, that we see most often you've got the standard quarter inch or 0.25 and you have the 0.18 or 3 16th inch ones. Please have some of those available of each size on your truck. Do not try to put a standard size terminal on this small 3 16th inch terminal. It's going to be loose, it'll be developing heat, and, and you just got a problem waiting to happen that usually would be in the form of a ghost in the machine. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Take extra time to get your wiring connections like they should be you'll avoid a boatload of problems down the road. So there's your low pressure control, high pressure control um, circuits. And you will find on systems that aren't equipped with a factory installed pressure switch, these uh, terminal sets will just be jumpered. So I've got an output and an input, really a loop circuit that'll go through a pressure switch attached to that. Y out and CC, these two combined um, are your compressor contactor coil voltage outputs. So where my board gets a call for the compressor here at Y from the thermostat, it will send an output on Y out and common to my compressor contactor. Over on the far side, we have some fan terminals. Uh, these are uh, uh, normally closed contacts going through this relay that essentially open up to cut the outdoor fan motor off in defrost. So again, three things have to happen in defrost. Number one, my reversing valve shifts. This reversing valve is energized in heat, so in defrost it has to de-energize, and this, term, this uh, onboard relay will open up breaking the circuit to that valve, causing it to shift. My normally closed fan terminals are going to open, cutting the outdoor fan off. My relay uh, is going to energize um, a 24 volt hot, switch over to this D circuit as an output for auxiliary heat. So my reversing valve switches. My outdoor fan cuts off. My auxiliary heaters come on. These are all onboard functions of this control, so you'll find no additional separate defrost relays or timers or anything like that. One clue that this is a demand defrost control is it has two different temperature sensors. We have an outdoor cool temperature and we have an outdoor air temperature. And this board actually has a learning routine and an algorithm that compares these two temperatures constantly and you'll find as the need for defrost increases generally these two temperatures get closer together. Um, I do not know exactly what point it triggers that and it's a bit of a moving target because again these boards have a learning routine so you can't necessarily predict when this board is going to initiate defrost. You have to make sure that is functioning properly, that your sensors are uh, correct, they're located properly, and then trust it to do its thing. You'll go up on some heat pumps that the coil will be totally clear of any frost, and yet this board is going to initiate defrost. You'll go to other systems that the coil is completely frosted up, 
and we're still operating in normal heat mode and 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 the board does not go in defrost at that time or or you know for several more minutes even with that frosted cool so it's got a mind of its own let it do its thing you've got to make sure that it functions you know through the through the testing last uh, but not least we have a set of test pins on this board and once we establish a condition where the uh, defrost is favorable which means I'm not going to just jumper the pins and put this board in defrost I want to run the active heating mode I want to unplug the outdoor fan motor wire and I want to cause the coil to frost then I'm going to accelerate my timer on your time temperature controls or um, uh, jumper these test pins on this demand control and initiate a defrost and, and watch that coil thaw out. The pattern with which your coil frost as well as defrost tells you a little something about your distributor circuitry I mean, if you're flowing properly um, on the refrigerant side. So you're, you're looking for a fairly uniform frost pattern from these coils and to truly test defrost I really like to ice up the coil myself uh, by unplugging the outdoor fan and, and, and then after having created a situation that needs defrost, then I test the control and watch that full defrost cycle. The test pins as well can be used for um, bypassing the onboard time delay. So this has a built-in five-minute compressor timer and anytime it is in time delay then we can short these pins momentarily and we're going to be able to um, bypass that delay and make the compressor come on. So that's sort of a quick run through uh, for the functions and, and inputs and outputs on this control and uh, the next time we will hook it up and make some voltage measurements and, and test a defrost cycle. Again, any electronic controls these days typically will have some sort of LEDs and the first thing you should do with any diagnostic process is look at what the machine is trying to tell you. And then with this particular board, we have the fault codes screen printed on the board itself and it gives you a series of lockout functions or um, shutdown functions, whether it's your pressure switches, sensor failures, time delay, things along those lines. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning. And again, when you get an opportunity, check out some of our stuff on HVACRSkills.com. Hopefully, whatever you need, um, We'll come in to a bit clearer focus you know, once you give us a call. Have a great day.